Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to week 12, our focus program. And we start with lectures of Isabel Chalandar on discrete and continuous semi-groups of composition operators. Isa, please. Many thanks, Javad. Many thanks for this invitation. And many thanks to the, to the people, very courageous, who are uh, behind their screen today. So first I will uh, present um, a sort of introduction and motivation. For uh, studying composition operators on uh, the only space H2. So, um, in the 50s, um, Rota introduced the notion of universal operator. Okay, and uh, here is the definition. So we, we are in the context of um, complex and separable Hilbert space. And the definition, I will put it in green. In this course. Um, so a U, which is linear and bounded on H, is universal if for all T linear and bounded on H, we can find a closed subspace M of H. and uh, not zero, <clears throat> and provided that T is not the zero operator. And lambda a constant, which is not zero, such that uh, the restriction of U, uh, so M is also invariant by U, U, so UM is in M, and um, the restriction of U to this closer space is equal to, uh, is in fact, is similar to lambda times T. So it's equal to um, an isomorphism denoted by a J, where uh, J is from M to H is an isomorphism. So in other words, the U versity to M is similar to a constant times uh, T. So in other words, uh, it means that U is a kind of model. For all uh, T. So uh, at first glance, uh, such operators uh, may be uh, very difficult to find, but actually it's not the case. There are many uh, universal operators. So there are many such operators. And uh, 
to be convinced of that, we have a, a theorem due to Caradus. So theorem will be in red. So it's an old result in the 50s. Um, Caradus proved that uh, if uh, you satisfy the two following conditions, uh, namely um, the dimension of the kernel of U is infinite, and this is a, in fact a necessary condition. And provided that uh, U is subjective, this is not necessary. So we can find other criteria, but at least with this criteria, uh, the proof is easy. So provided you have um, those two hypotheses, then U is universal. So it's quite surprising that, uh, okay, it's hypotheses which are not so difficult to, to satisfy. And then you get a model for all the uh, um, linear and bounded operator on a Hilbert space, which is uh, complex and separable. Okay, we will do the proof because it's a course. So I thought I should do some proofs with all the details. Um, so um, let uh, k be the kernel of u. Uh, then we have the decomposition, the decomposition of h um, like that, the kernel and uh, the kernel curve. So with our notation, it's k direction, it's orthogonal. And uh, then when we look at uh, u tilde, defined to be the restriction of u to k perp, which is invariant by definition, um, this is a bijection. from k per onto h, um, since u is supposed to be subjective. Now let uh, v be defined to be u tilde minus one, so from h, to k perp and let uh, w from h to k uh, be an isometric isomorphism. Um, because all the uh, infinite dimensional separable Hilbert space are isometrically um, isomorphic. Um, so observe that in this case, uh, what we have is that uv is equal to the identity and u w is, is equal to zero by construction. Okay, now what we do is that um, we pick lambda such that um, the modulus of lambda, so lambda in C, not zero, such that the modulus of lambda times the norm of V to norm of T is strictly less than one. And uh, define 
uh, J as follows. So J is equal to the sum, infinite sum of lambda to the K, VK, W, T, K. Uh, thanks to this hypothesis, this converges in norm. And uh, we can separate the terms for k equal to zero. That is, j is in fact equal to w plus uh, lambda uh, v j t. Okay, once we have uh, this trick, uh, we observe that then uh, uj is equal to u w plus lambda v j t. And this is in fact equal to lambda j t uh, since by construction, u uh, w is equal to zero and u v is equal to the identity. Okay, so now the norm of J minus W uh, is in fact equal to the modulus of lambda, the norm of um, V, J, T, um, which is strictly less than one. And uh, um, W is Inosymmetric. Okay. Um, so this is an isometry, the norm of, so of norm one, and this is strictly less than one. So it implies that, uh, in fact, J is bounded below. So you can find an alpha such that the norm of J of X is greater than alpha the norm of X. So J is bounded below, it means that it's injective and uh, close range. So uh, finally, J defined from H to its image, which is closed, uh, is an isomorphism. And we have found our subspace M. And J do the, do the job, does the job. Okay, so as you see, it's a quite easy proof. We have a trick, which is very nice, which consists in uh, considering this series. Okay, so why is it interesting? Um, so from this, we get the following proposition. Let U um, in L of H be a universal operator. Uh, so if all the minimal Uh, for the inclusion in variance space of I <clears throat> of U and not uh, reduced to zero are of finite dimension then every t would have an invariance of space, non-trivial invariance of space. Uh, 
a non-trivial invariant subspace. And uh, if one minimal invariant subspace of this universal uh, is um, in finite dimensional. Uh, then we have found, we have found a T, which would be a uh, T is in fact, um, uh, you restricted to this M is similar to lambda t, where lambda is not zero. And we have found a t with no invariance of space, with no non-trivial invariance of space. Okay, so this proposition, you need, if you have never seen that, it takes a few minutes to understand what it means, but it's an obvious corollary of uh, the concept of universal operator. And so it means that studying the uh, universal operators is uh, a way to attack the famous open problem, which is the um, invariance of space problem. And the, the um, the link with the uh, composition operators and semi-group of composition operators is coming now. We consider now um, the application from D to D defined by uh, phi of R equal to Z plus R over one plus R Z, where R is between zero and one. So such Application is an automorphism of the open unit disk. Uh, which is called a hyperbolic uh, because it has two fixed points, which are one and minus one. So hyperbolic means that you have two distinct um, fixed points on the boundary, which are both one. And now we consider the composition operators defined on the Hardy space H2, so which is isometric to H2 of the unit circle. And uh, okay, H2, just remind you that is the sum of the ANZN, where the AN are in L2. Okay, and um, we look at the composition C phi R defined on H2 taking values in H2. And, um, okay, thanks to the, um, the little world, um subordination, Theorem. We have this. Uh, we have something which is not so obvious. Uh, we can prove that C phi applied to H two is still in H two. Indeed, this phenomenon is true for any phi. Well, in fact, for all phi, which are holomorphic, um, it is true that uh, the composition 
on H2 is still in H2. Okay, it's not obvious from the definition of H2. Um, there is a trick, um, but I think it's uh, most of the people here are quite familiar with that. So I will not give the details of the proof. Okay, so uh, we have that. Uh, let's keep the proof and um, um, another remark which is uh, uh, very useful is that um, in fact such composition on the H2 is uh, linear unbounded. In fact the linearity is obvious but it's also bounded. And this follows from the, from the closed graph, graph theorem and the fact that uh, C phi of H2 is included in H2. So this is a consequence of uh, the closed graph theorem. Uh, that we can apply because in fact, um, H2 um, in, is inject continuously in the set of holomorphic function on D. It means that um, for any point in D, the evaluation is continuous. Okay. Okay, so we have a linear and bounded operator on H2. And uh, it happens that C phi R minus identity satisfies the hypothesis of Carradus theorem. Okay, it's not so obvious that uh, it is the case. Um, it's, it was proved first by um, Norgan, Rosenthal, and Winthrop in uh, 97. And the key of the proof, or their proof, because there was another one given by um, Eva Gallardo and uh, in a joint by with Carl Cohen uh, with another approach in, um, uh, using um, same groups of tuplets operators. But so this proof relies on the fact that uh, they um, construct uh, sorry, problem with my, uh, okay. Um, they consider the composition of the space H2 with model spaces, KB, directs on the KB and so on. where B is the black product associated with um, phi n, sorry, phi Uh, 
and at zero uh, with the notation uh, this is phi composed n times with itself. So it happens that this is in fact um, interpolation sequence, so in particular a Blaschke sequence, then you construct the Blaschke product associated with that, and then you consider the um, KB, which is uh, in fact uh, H2 minus PH2. And um, then you can prove that uh, C phi, uh, the composition is minus identity, is in fact uh, similar to weighted shift uh, on this. Um, with the, each component in this uh, decomposition. So there are, there are quite, um, well, there are many other uh, tools to get to the conclusion that uh, this operator, C phi M minus identity, satisfies the hypothesis of Carradi's theorem. Okay, and just note that the, uh, the invariance of spaces of this guy and C phi R are the same. So um, regarding the problem of invariance spaces, uh, it's equivalent to study uh, C phi R. Okay, so there were, so uh, the big challenge is to, to understand C phi R, so invariant and not all the invariant, but the minimal invariant subspace of C phi R. Uh, so it happens to be quite a difficult problem. <laughs> and uh, there were many uh, authors who um, um, obtained some contribution. I would like to talk about Valentin Matache, um, Raymond Martini, but also were the joint work of uh, Eva Gallardo and uh, together with uh, Pamela Gorkin. Uh, they were interested in the invariance spaces of FISC1 generated by a function. And they obtained conditions on uh, the regularity of the function at one and minus one, which are precisely the, the point where phi r is has fixed point. And they obtain a condition um, to get to guarantee that the, uh, the span of condition on F to guarantee that the span of C phi R and F and you take the closure is not minimal. Okay, so it's not the end of the story. Otherwise you would have, uh, there would be a big event to, to explain the solution of the invariance of space problem coming from this uh, description of minimal invariance of spaces of C phi R. So that's the way I was interested in composition operators. It's related to a big problem in operator theory. And moreover, uh, it happens that C phi R can be embedded in the semigroups, in fact, in the groups. Um, so this operator is also interesting for the following 
from the following point of view. Uh, phi r is in fact equal for a well-chosen t. It's the same as uh, z plus one minus e minus t over one plus um, exponential minus t. The same. Uh, which is denoted by, by phi t. <coughs> for an appropriate t. Okay, so just uh, solve this equation. Okay. And if you see phi r like that, uh, note that phi t plus s is phi t composed with phi s. Phi zero is the identity. And moreover, for all z, the mapping from t to phi, phi t of z is continuous. Okay, so uh, it happens that the composition by c phi t is a semigroup of operators on the Hardy space H2. Okay, in fact, it's a group because phi t is invertible. In fact, it's even more, it is a group. So it's time to, to give definition of the semi group of separators. Um, we define the notion of C0 uh, semi groups of composition operators. Okay, so a group, a, a, semi, a semi group, which is not necessarily C0. So we say that. Uh, a family like that in the in indexes by R plus. And here we take the banner space and we take linear embedded operators uh, is a semi group. If we have the following um, algebraic condition. for all S and T um, positive. And we take, we say that um, it's a C0 semi group. Uh, is a C0 semi group if moreover, or we say also a strongly continuous sun group. If moreover we had a topological condition that is for any X the limit. when t tends to zero is x. Okay, which is equivalent to say that uh, for any x, um, the application um, from t to t, t of x is continuous. Okay. 
And in this case, uh, it's a nice context because uh, when we have a semigroup, we have a generator. And in the case where we have a C0 semigroup, the generator um, is densely defined. So then, if Uh, if TT is a C0 semigroup, we consider D of A to be the vector for which the limit of um, TT So that this limit exists. And we consider A uh, to be equal to this limit. If X is in the domain, and because we have a C0 semigroup, it happens that uh, D of A is dense in X. And moreover, uh, when we have two semigroups, they are identical, they are the same, even on the, if the their generator is the same. So the generator characterizes completely um, C0 semigroups. And the generator, if you look at the definition, it's uh, data at zero. In some way. So the, the aim of the talk today um, is to look at the asymptotic behavior of so the equation we start with today is try to characterize the uh, asymptotic behavior so means when t tends to infinity of Um, of this in terms of its uh, generator. So can you read on the generator the asymptotic behavior when t tends to infinity of t of t? So in, a, in the most general context, it's not, uh, there is no, no easy answer. Um, but we will restrict ourselves to the following context. So in the cycle, we will consider X balance phase which embeds continuously in all D the set of functions from D to C which are holomorphic uh, I already mentioned that but I write it again uh, it means that for all points in D, the evaluation is continuous.
um, so uh, regarding the uh, topology on X. So th this condition is very natural. Uh, since when we have the convergence in X, we have the convergence in the fresh space of D. Uh, since provided we have, so when we have uh, this um, limit, it implies automatically that for all K compact in D, The norm, the infinity norm of k, uh, of fn minor f on k, tends to zero. So this topology is compatible with the uh, topology on the Frechy space, which is characterized by the uniform convergence on every compact subset of D. Okay, so we work with Banner space for which we have this. Moreover, uh, we consider um, analytic semiflow on D. So I will precise what it is. It's something we, we the definition is, um, as previously, we have the identity map on D. Um, all the phi t are from D to D, and they are holomorphic or analytic. Um, and uh, we have uh, this for all S and T greater than zero. And an extra topological condition, which is that for all T, uh, the application T to phi T of C is continuous on R plus. Okay. Now we assume, we assume moreover, because it's not something which is obvious, we assume that phi t of x um, is, uh, when we compose phi t with the function x, uh, no, sorry, um, c phi t of x. So we assume that once we compose with phi t, if f is in x is composed, this composition is still in x. And what I have mentioned previously is that uh, this is true. Oh, sorry, I have seen something in discussion. Ah. Okay. Uh, I, so there is a question from Paul Gauthier. It's about the definition of the generator. So we consider a subspace of X. Uh, that is the, the vector for which this limit exists. And uh, for such an X, uh, A is defined, it's is because uh, we have a C zero semigroups, it happens, but it's not, um, I didn't, I haven't, I haven't done the proof. It happens that this uh, subspace is uh, dense in X, but this is a consequence of, of having a C zero, of having this uh, topological condition. Okay, so the, 
the generator is the couple uh, ADA. It's well defined. Uh, its domain is precisely the bigger space on which this limit exists. Yes, merci, Isabel. So it's a densely defined and bounded. In general, it's not a bounded operator. That's the problem. Okay, so assume that we have a special banner space uh, satisfying this um, condition. I have mentioned that using a, a little Woods evaluation principle, which I didn't prove, but just trust me, uh, this is true for, uh, for example, for x equal to h2 and many other uh, spaces. Um, but it's not true in general. I will mention. <clears throat> okay, there is no. Uh, there are some spaces for which you you can't apply any such a subordination principle. But at least for our favorite Hilda space, this is the case. And then, when you have a semi-flow, you can consider C phi t. Uh, which is, uh, it happens that um, because we have taken a banner space which embeds continuously in uh, the fresh space, because we have uh, f composed with phi t in x or f in x using the closed graph theorem. It's, it's, it is automatic that C phi t is now linear and bounded. Okay, and uh, automatically, because we here we have a semi-flow, it happens that C phi t is a semi-group for any uh, Banner space with, with our property. Okay, but we would like more because we would like uh, uh, the existence of a generator densely defined, which is um, a, uh, which contains all the information about the semigroup. So, in other words, we would like more than a semigroup. Would like a C zero semigroup. And uh, here is a lemma which provides sufficient conditions to get a C0 semi group. Uh, which provides sufficient conditions to get. Uh, C0 semi group. So assume that he accepts his banner space. Uh, assume that uh, TT. Is a, a semi group on X. Um, okay, uh, so our X embeds in all D. Assume that the polynomials are dense in X. And uh, assume, moreover, 
that the norm of TT for T small is uniformly bounded. That is, assume that we can find a delta such that the sup of the norm of TT is bounded. Then um, our equivalent, uh, the fact that TT is a C0 semigroup and the fact that you can you just need to check it on uh, Z to the N. That is It's enough to prove that this tends to zero for all n, where e n equal to z to the n. Okay, that's the way we can prove that, um, provided we have a semi-flow on H two of d the composition operators which are well defined on H2 uh, are in fact C0 semigroup because so that's exactly what we do in many cases to check that we have a C0 semigroup. Okay, the proof, the proof is just obvious. I write it rapidly. Uh, so, um, a implies B is obvious, follows from the definition. And uh, the, other, the other one is not difficult. It just uh, the matter to, <clears throat> to check that uh, this norm is bounded by TTF my TT times the polynomial. And we take a polynomial uh, close enough to F in the cycle uh, plus TTP minus P plus F minus P. Okay. And um, for T small enough, uh, here you have the, the sup of tt plus one times the norm of f minus p plus uh, ttp minus p if t is small enough if t is less than delta you have this and now you use the um, density of the polynomial. And uh, so this is small. This can be small by A. And this is small by B. OK, and in the case of, I just need to, to add I will just finish this with uh, our examples and tomorrow we will go further. Um, when we have the Hardy space, um, and TT is the composition by a semi-flow, it works very well because we have, we can prove that C phi T, the norm, is in fact bounded by one plus phi t at zero over one minus phi t of zero, one over two. And uh, because phi t of zero tends to zero as t tends to zero, you can see that we have a uniform bound for the norm of c phi t. And moreover, the polynomial are dense.
So we have we have everything. It have, and uh, I'm sorry. And moreover, uh, when we look at uh, phi T n, which is in fact uh, T T E n minus E n, when you look at the very definition, just an interval. And using um, the um, dominated convergence theorem, it stands to zero. So here you have uh, we we have seen in detail why uh, the the way we can prove that we have um, C zero semi groups each time you have a control of the norm of T small of the family. And each time you can use the dominated convergence theorem. So each time you have a definition of a space considering uh, based on integral and the density of the polynomial, you will get uh, a C0 semi groups. Okay, maybe I should stop now. Sorry for being a little longer. Thanks a lot, Isa. Let's thanks to speaker first. Any question or comments for Isabel? Uh, I, I have one comment in yes. in, in the proof you, you gave. I mean, if you go up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yes, here, precisely here. I think F minus P is small is not by A, it's by assumption. It's the, um, it's the assumption that the polynomials are dense in. Because you want to prove it. Sorry. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's my assumption. So, uh, okay, sorry. I. <laughs> yes, you're, you're perfectly right. So it's the density of the polynomial. Density of the it's polynomial. not A at all, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's and, not, and yeah. Indeed, my, my main question is that, I mean, usually we stick to polynomials because we are on the open unit disk, but is there, I mean, in research article, other sets which are dense, have they been considered, not just polynomials? Um, yes, I think... You mean if you, you have other spaces which are not polynomial and Yeah, the, the, the theorem is true if we, instead of polynomials, we consider something else which is dense. I yes, mean, and provided, yes, yes, of yes. course. And yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering in application, I, I haven't seen, have you seen yeah. in application? Uh, applications in where you have- uh, Something okay. else which is dense. Without the density of the polynomial. Yeah. Um, well, the problem that the the uh, examples I have in mind, that's the thing I, I wanted to, I will start to mention uh, tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Is that uh, there are very uh, natural spaces such as H infinity or blow spaces, or um, recently uh, Eva uh, Jakubovic and um, Siskakis proved that for any banner space, um, between H infinity and blow space, um, you have no uh, C0 semigroup. But in both cases, they are much bigger and you you <laughs> you lose the density of the polynomial. So okay. uh, I have no. Uh, well, let's yeah. wait for tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, sorry, we are close to the next talk. So if there is any question, you can directly ask Isabel or wait until tomorrow. Okay, Let's so thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you very much.